You've seen firefighters everywhere, maybe even in your own home. But do you know what they do when they're not putting out fires and rescuing people from burning aircraft? Find out on this episode of Meeting the Mission. In the United States, fire prevention was born in Boston in 1630, but the first professional fully paid fire department wasn't formed until April of 1853 in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were the first to use horses to pull their fire engines, and in the days before street lamps, oil lanterns served as their headlights. Firefighting has come a long way since then. Instead of horse-drawn carts, we now have state-of-the-art engines equipped with hoses capable of delivering up to 1,000 gallons of water per minute. But for one firefighter, these technological advances mean nothing without a good team and some serious training. My name is Matt Coleman. I'm a fire captain here at Joint Base Charleston. I've been a firefighter for just over 17 years. Mr. Coleman is in charge of the training at Station 4, one of the fire departments located on the weapons station side of Joint Base Charleston. Today we'll be doing a confined space drill. We have a victim hidden in the maze, and it's going to be our job to get him out. The first thing we do is don our gear and perform safety checks. In this scenario, we're simulating an oxygen deficient environment, so in addition to our helmets and gloves, we'll be wearing supplied air breathing apparatus. The training area is a maze with zero visibility. Firefighters have to navigate almost completely blind with only predetermined search patterns to find their way. The fog renders any headlamps or flashlights completely useless. The fire department also has a training ground where they can practice putting out real fires. We go out to the burn pit to train on fighting aircraft fires. The exterior operation is to create a point of egress for the passengers and crew. You can go offensive or defensive. Defensive would be if the truck is just oscillating around the aircraft. We're going offensive and we're going to fight a fire in the cargo area. I've always had fun in the training fires. They're actually more difficult to put out than a regular fire because we're fighting propane. The burn pit training monitor has to turn the propane on and off to put the fire out. So we're just being judged on our technique. Mr. Coleman says all of that training definitely pays off. When you're a firefighter, you're part of a team. What that means is your individual success is predicated upon who you're surrounded by. And here in Charleston, I'm very fortunate that I get to be surrounded by some of the best 